Chamonix, France, 2012. Home of the North Face Ultra Trail de Mont Blanc. Now in its 10th year, this unique event is one of the world's most iconic and most gruelling races. Pushing runners day and night through some of the most stunning, rugged and demanding terrain on earth. It will be a case of mind over matter for the 6,000 competitors who've made their way to the heart of the Alps for Europe's premier ultra running event. Among the British entrants are 2010 winner Jez Bragg and four-time winner Lizzie Hawker. In a 100-mile race, a 100-mile mountain race like this, really anything can happen. The Ultra Trail de Mont Blanc, I think, stands sort of head and shoulders above all the others, actually. A classic, iconic sort of setting for a race like this. I think it's, uh, it's the game, it's the mountain. This is a race where your mind is asking, is challenging you to stop so many times. It's really a challenge within yourself rather than thinking about the competition around you. It's the mountain, it's the trail, the chance to, to try and just get to know yourself more deeply. The guys are, um, you know, battling it out over a distance of 100 miles, over mountain passes, extreme weather. Uh, it's just epic. Just the way it's grown, not only in the support, but just in people's imaginations. It's just captured a spark in so many people. I mean, all the best guys come to this race and, and, and train with this race as their focus because it is, um, you know, the one to win. Um, amazingly, there's no, no prize money. Um, it's just a huge amount of prestige. And, um, you know, it is the, the race to win. It's simple as that. And that's why it attracts all the best runners from, from all over the world. The UTMB began in 2003 as a challenge to make a tour of the Mont Blanc Massif on foot and has become hugely popular with locals, visitors and, of course, the hordes of spectators. For some competitors, it's a once-in-a-lifetime race. Others, like Lizzie Hawker, keep coming back. This is the sixth time Lizzie started the race. I've always run, um, but it was only... In the beginning, it was only for myself. It was just my way of being outside and in the nature because I wasn't living in the mountains. Um, so really for me, the, the ultra running started in 2005, um, both on the road and then the UTMB was my first mountain race. So kind of all snowballed from that really. Adventure racer Keith Byrne provides the race support for Lizzie. Lizzie is the queen of the UTMB and I think uh, she isn't just loved by the UK trail runners, the, the, the French running community here, they love Lizzie and um, Lizzie also is respects them. So whenever Lizzie's introduced to the crowd, it's one of the biggest cheers of the event every year. Lizzie's been coming here since 2006. Um, so she coming into the race, Lizzie was a four time winner of the UTMB, which is, is, is she's the only person that's done that, male or female. Well, I try and kind of not let other people's pressure get to me. Um, I think you always put yourself under pressure because you've got your own hopes and dreams for what you actually want to challenge yourself with during the race. So I think there's more pressure from that. As the 2,300 runners taking on the main event assemble, it's time to clear the mind and focus. Not an easy task for the ultra running stars in the media spotlight. The start line includes Frenchman Sebastian Chagnot and Francois Dayen, American Michael Foote, Shuoshi Kabaraki of Japan, and many more from many more countries, male and female, all hemmed in by the thousands of spectators. It's pretty incredible, really. Um, I don't know any other, you know, running race like it. To be there on the start line is always just such a privilege because you know what everyone else there on the start line has gone through to actually get to that point with sacrifices that they've had to make. So it's really quite an emotional moment starting the race. 
Lizzie and Jez are well positioned at the front as the runners pour through the Chamonix streets. It's atmospheric and emotional for the runners and spectators, a rare moment of mutual respect. It's just like a wall of people either side of you. It's, it's, it's really quite amazing. There are four different races, all major challenges, but the Ultra Trail is the greatest. Once they're past the crowds, the runners' thoughts return to the monumental task ahead. The route has 9,600 metres of vertical elevation. Um, to put it into perspective, it's basically like running up and down Snowdon ten times um, from Clamberis, um, both distance and elevation. You know, it's, it's tough, it's really tough. It's the same height as Everest as well, you know, it's, it's kind of just epic sort of numbers we're talking about. The full UTMB route begins in Chamonix before travelling through the towns of Saint-Gervais and Les Contamines, as well as a number of smaller villages on its way to Italy and Courmayeur at the 48-mile mark. Then there are another 56 miles and Switzerland to get through before the runners return to Chamonix, with times ranging from 20 to 46 hours. It's a massive undertaking, but this year's extreme weather conditions in the higher passes will make it even tougher, and concerns for the competitors' safety mean the race is rerouted to France only. But the brutal climbs, bitter cold and the rain will make this year's race just as difficult to complete. It's those sort of conditions which, you know, are typically thrown up running in the mountains and you kind of have to expect it, you have to be able to deal with it, you have to adapt, you have to have the right kit and mentally prepare yourself for it and, and, and just deal with it really. The first checkpoint after Chamonix is the resort village of Les Ouches, nestled at the bottom of the first major climb. It's full of support and is a chance to fuel up. A small pack at the front includes the Frenchman and crowd favourites Francois Dayen and Sebastien Chagnot. Chagnot has previously finished second and third in the race. As well as having a shelf full of trophies from around the world, he's quietly hopeful this time round. A lot of people want to win the race, but it's uh, for everybody. You have just one in the top of the podium. After, I think it's more important if you take a pleasure and uh, keep humble with the mountain. Lizzie Hawker is the leading woman and is well placed amongst the men. For her, the competition seems less important than the experience of the race itself. For me, it's always been a way of being outside and being in the nature. And when I can run in the mountains, then that's a bonus. In a race like this, it's also kind of a sharing of the experience with not only with the other runners, but with all the supporters and everyone following the race, because it really does become much more than the race itself. Lizzie leads a strong women's field that includes course record holder Chrissy Mull and Emma Rocker, runner-up at the Marathon de Sable. As they leave Les Ouches, evening descends and the race has truly begun. I think the question that all 50,000 people who are kind of here to cheer on the UTMB, uh, when they look at Lizzie, is they, they're all asking the same thing. What is it about Lizzie that means that she, whenever they see her on the course, she looks focused. She just looks so strong. Uh, she doesn't always necessarily look like she's enjoying it, but uh, I think uh, this race is obviously physical, but I think it's mental and mentally, Lizzie, she's tough. And you know, that's a tough thing to train for. Francois Dayen leads the men into Saint-Gervais after the descent from Le Delivray. But just two minutes encompass all the lead group keeping the pressure on everyone and leaving the race wide open at this early stage. Spectators make it to some remote areas. The spa towns of Saint-Gervais and Lake Contamine attract big crowds like the Tour de France. 
you'll be climbing up a, um, an ascent in the middle of the night and people will be standing outside their farm or whatever and ringing, ringing the cowbells and, you know, standing in the pouring rain. I mean, the, the support that the local people give the race is just incredible. It really gives you a boost just knowing that people are there for all the runners and, and they're becoming part of the race as well. Some of the most raucous encouragement comes from the volunteers manning the nutrition stands. As well as lifting the spirits, these stops provide the energy and hydration you need to complete an ultra run. Some runners plan their food intake for the entire course precisely, whilst others go with their gut instincts. I tend to go by feel very much for food during a race like this because um, you can't really know in advance what your stomach's going to actually be able to take. Um, this time, I probably didn't eat nearly enough. As the runners start to suffer from pain and exhaustion, their support crews play a crucial role. Their job is to know what the athletes need before the athletes know themselves. In Lizzie Hawker's case, her support comes from Keith Byrne. I've seen Lizzie coming into an A station, you know, she's crying. And, it, and so the job of us is, is she crying because she's in pain? Is she crying because she's not been eating or drinking enough? Or is she crying maybe because she's enjoying herself? We, we show ourselves in different ways. And it's kind of, you've got to make a snap decision to kind of work out, because Lizzie's not going to give you many clues. Hey, Lizzie, how are you? I'm fine, but she might be crying. So you need to look in her pack. Has she been eating enough? Has she been drinking enough? I was actually running pretty well, or not a lot, <laughs> for, for most of the race. Leaving Lake Contamine, Lizzie is well ahead of her rivals. Sebastian Chagnot looks strong too. Getting the technical nutrition right and the strategy is vital if you want to win, but that's not what brings people back to the UTMB year after year. Just because of the atmosphere, um, the kind of connections between the runners and the supporters and just all any, anybody out on the trail, um, it, it kind of just pulls so many people into it and becomes more than the pure race itself. Join us after the break to see if Lizzie will rule the mountains once again. Welcome back to the North Face Ultra Trail de Mont Blanc. 2,300 competitors have run into the mountains and into the night. This is a race that tests endurance to the limits. And by this stage, the course and conditions are starting to take their toll. 2010 winner, Jez Bragg, knows this well. A lot of guys just, just you know, break because of the, 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 the difficulty, the pace, the, the challenge. And so you've got to be totally on your game in order to be successful and to, you know, to win, basically. Four-time winner Lizzie Hawker is always at the top of her game, but even she knows it's never smooth running in the mountains. Yeah, well, in a race like this, there's always, you know, um, patches when you, where you don't feel so strong and then patches where you do feel stronger. In the harder moments, you really kind of just have to focus down and be in the moment and literally take it moment by moment, step by step. And then you kind of realize one of the truths about life is that nothing lasts. And it's the same in the race. The bad moments won't last. So you just have to hold that, that thought in your head. A philosophical approach is needed for this event. And Frenchman Sebastien Chagnot, two-time podium placer, knows this aspect draws many people away from the roads and onto ultra running. It's, um, I think the, the, it's very simple, the, the explication is very simple. It's uh, the, the big place uh, under and uh, it's very, very uh, incredible, the, the connection with the people. And I think a lot of people want to run without uh, timing and uh, in mountain or in the desert or all over the world, it's the same thing, you run in the nature. 
Leaving the tranquility behind, they reach the atmospheric Notre Dame de la Gorge. Chagnot, Hawker and Bragg are in good company, with Francois Dayen leading overall. There's plenty of encouragement from the local supporters, but despite this, injuries, fatigue and the grim weather conditions are starting to thin the field in an event in which only half the entrance complete. I, uh, my uh, ankle, yes. Regardless of a few niggling injuries, Lizzie's still in good form. I've had um, injury issues really since March, just with my bum and my back. And things have been improving and I've had some really good training and a few good races, but I'm still racing with pain. It was no surprise when, when the pain did really kind of kick me. Um, so I just tried to run the best I could nevertheless. You do what you have to do. <laughs> um, you try not to focus on that and just focus on being in the moment and um, you know, taking it step by step, literally. Unfortunately, after a tough year's racing, Jez Braggs reached the end of the road. He can't take another step and his race is over. I knew as, as soon as we were really leaving Chamonix that things weren't right and um, I gave it about sort of 15k and into the first climb and um, just energy levels were too low and just not settling in, not feeling myself, working too hard for what I was doing, not feeling comfortable and just not sustainable really. And um, It's a funny old game ultra running really, you're sort of pushing yourself to the limit and it race after race and sometimes it lingers and sometimes it builds up and I think that's probably what's happened really. I've just had a build up over a course of a few races and my system's just, you know, a bit beaten up basically and it's unusual for me to, to pull out a race. I think I've, I've, you know, it's into the hundreds of ultras and, and marathons I've run and I've only not finished perhaps a handful, you know, five tops and it's not in my nature, but it was just so clear cut today and it just wasn't worth making things worse in, in, in pushing on through. So, yeah, I decided to, to pull the plug as hard as it is. It's a heartbreaking decision for Jez, but one that consolidates Diane's position at the front as they head towards the closing stages. Sebastian Chagnot returns to Lake Contamine with a few trail scars. But despite forging on, he's forced to drop out after 94 kilometers due to serious problems with his eyesight caused by total exhaustion. And during the race, uh, uh, I, I focus here and now. I focus uh, just uh, uh, in my uh, moment, at this moment, it's my moment. For me, when I get high in the mountains, it really gives me a boost of energy, because um, that's where I love to be. As soon as we're climbing up, I, I like it. Lizzie Hawker looks set to take the win, but at this level of endurance racing and with rivals hidden in the dark, nothing can be taken for granted. Well, you can hope that you get to the, you know, the finish line first, but you can never be sure of it. So you really just have to um, just focus in and just do the best that you can in every moment and if the next woman catches you then as long as you're doing the best that you can you can't ask yourself for more. In a race like this you never know I mean you could have a lead of half an hour 40 minutes but you could lose that on one ascent or descent if you move if you start moving slowly and the next woman is is really moving well so 
you know, even even if you've got a cushion of time, like half an hour or more, you you can never let up because um, you can lose that just you know in in a moment. So it's it's really not till you're kind of on the road coming into the loop of Chamonix um, around the square that you can be, be almost sure that you'll get to the finish line. Strong throughout the whole race and leading for most of it, Francois Dayen must have been confident of winning for a while, but his victory won't mean any the less for that. He returns to Chamonix quicker than many who've completed less than half the distance on the shorter courses. His time, an incredible 10 hours, 32 minutes. Well, the race was uh, incredible. <laughs> uh, today my feeling was very good. When I was in the race, uh, my motivation was good and and I give all I have, and it's good. <laughs> it's, the more, it's the most beautiful race, yes. These are emotional moments for every finisher after 100 kilometers and anywhere between 10 and 26 hours on the course. But Lizzie Hawker's win in 12 hours, 32 minutes, 45 minutes ahead of her nearest rival, is just exceptional. The fifth title at the UTMB in 10 editions, uh, that says it all. The nearest other person, uh, male, uh, has won it three times. So Lizzie is the queen of the UTMB. I think um, she would never say this. And this is always the joke we all have in that Lizzie's so humble, she will never talk about her strengths. So that's the job of people like myself to, because we see her and we can see how she works, how she prepares how she acts during the race, and then how she is after the race. You know, she's not running around Chamonix after the race going, I'm the winner. No, she's just like, oh no, I did what everybody else did and I finished the race. You feel a deep sense of gratitude just a sense of thanks, really, to, to the mountains and to the trails for you know, letting you actually make it back to Chamonix. It's kind of a looking forward because the finish line of a race is just, you know, it's just one step on your journey of wherever you're going with your running. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a beginning as well as an end.